settling in for a new year. Parents and children may feel uncertain about how this school year will go because of COVID-19. Here's advice for helping your youngster learn and adjust to things. How can I keep my child learning on days when he isn't in school? Your youngster learns the most from what comes naturally to him, playing. Set up educational toys like magnetic letters, building blocks, and jigsaw puzzles. If your work comes from home, invite him to be your co-worker. Let him make badges for the two of you to wear and give him jobs. Sort office supplies. Decorate your work area. My son struggles with social distancing. What's the best way to explain it? Social distancing is a tough phrase for little ones. Since learning to socialize is an important part of their development, so try using different language. We need extra personal space because there are extra germs going around. Or encourage him to picture himself in an imaginary bubble. Gently say bubble to remind him to keep his distance. My child misses his grandparents. What should we do? This is a good opportunity to help your child learn about compassion and empathy. Explain that staying away from grandma and grandpa is a kind thing to do right now because older people may get very sick from COVID-19. Encourage him to call his grandparents often and if possible, play on online chats so he can see them. Steps towards independence. Identify parts of your child's morning routine that she could take over, like brushing her hair and pouring her cereal. Help her until she gets the hang of, of each task. She'll become more independent, and mornings will go more smoothly for everyone. Above or below? Build your youngster's spiral awareness, his understanding of where objects are in space. With this fun activity, sit back to back and take turns describing what to draw. Using position words like above, under, beside, and between. Draw a boy standing beside, draw a boy standing under a tree. Now turn around and compare your pictures. Did you know? You're better able to care for your children if you take good care of yourself, especially during trying times. Try to carve out a long time to relax. Maybe do crossword puzzles or knit. Also, consider limiting how much news you watch or read and get a better night's sleep by turning off screens at least one hour before bed. Wolf quoting. A problem is a chance for you to do your best. Just for fun, which hand is best for coloring? Neither. It's better to color with crayons. School success checklist. Is your little one ready for the school year? Help her master the skills on this checklist to start the year right. I can follow the directions. Give your youngster one and two step instructions. Hop to your bedroom and put your shoes away. When she masters following two steps, add a third. I'm a good listener. Ask your youngster to close her eyes when you make three sounds. Clap your hands, tap a spoon against the glass, crumple a piece of paper. Can she name the sounds in order? I take turns. Encourage your child to spot examples of turn take of turn taking. Perhaps when your family passes food around at dinner or plays a board game. Play and learn with loose parts. Nuts and bolts, ball caps. Marbles and other loose parts you have around the house can inspire your child to think creatively and flexibility. Fill a box with loose parts and try these ideas. Frame a pixel. Place a frame, glass removed, on the table and let your youngster arrange those parts inside to create pictures. She might make a random design or maybe she'll form letters, numbers, or shapes. For example, she could use pebbles or craft sticks to make the first letter of her name inside the frame. Now she can clear the frame and make a new picture. Find the similarities. Hand your child a loose part. Say, a pom-pom. How many other objects in her, in her box match it in some way? Ask her to tell you what they have in common. She may know as a marble is the same shape, round. A block is the same color, red. And a sponge has a similar texture, squishy. Then put the item back in the box 
and let her choose something for you to match up. Make life more predictable. With all the disruptions to our lives this spring and summer, my San Diego became clingy and whiny. My aunt, who raised five children, pointed out that a predictable routine could help him feel more secure. So together, Diego and I make a picture schedule that showed what we should do what we should do each day. We listed items like eat breakfast after after getting dressed for school, play outside before dinner, and read a bedtime story. Diego drew a picture beside each one, a bowl of cereal for eating breakfast, a soccer ball for playing outside, and a book for story time. We hung the schedule on our bathroom mirror so Diego sees it first thing in the morning and knows what to expect that day. Life may still be stressful, but having a routine has made things feel a little more normal. Get up, get moving. Young children need up to three hours of, act- of active play each day to build healthy bodies and minds. Use these activities to get your little one moving. Gallop like a horse. Let your child pretend to be a horse. He can roll a die and gallop for that number of times that he should roll again. How many gallops does it take for him to get from one end of the room to the other? How about through your whole house? Dance with a balloon. Turn on music and have your youngster bat a, bat a blow up, blown up balloon straight up into the air. Now everyone dances like crazy until the balloon touches the ground. When it lands, dancers freeze in place for a count to five, launch the balloon, and dance again. Introducing me. How can I work with the teacher to help my daughter to to do her best this year? Start by writing an email or a note to the teacher. Ask your daughter what she would like you to, to include. Perhaps information about your family or about her favorite things. Examples. Ellie has a baby brother and her favorite color is green. Then add information to help the teacher understand your daughter's needs. Example. She goes to her dad's house every other weekend. Ellie might, n- Ellie might not always speak up with something hardest for. It's hard for her. Be sure to touch base with the teacher throughout the year, from time to time. Send an email or a note. Both and things are going great, and when you have a question or concern, the teacher will be happy to hear that your children, that your child enjoyed a book that she read to the class. And the and the regular communication will make it easier to work as a team if a problem arises. Better behave better behavior. Plan ahead. What's behind your child's behavior? Little ones cope with challenging situations in different ways. And one way is is by acting out. Use these strategies to prevent misbehavior before it starts. Know the cues. Your youngster might not tell you that she's tired, hungry, or worried, but she may show you how she's feeling by throwing a tantrum or starting an argument with her brother. Watch for triggers that cause her to act up. Prevention may be as simple as providing a nap, a snack, or a snuggle and some reassurance. People in the loop. Remember that your child wants to behave well. Set her up for success by explaining ahead of time what she's supposed to do. When we walk to the mailbox, you need to hold my hand the whole time. Prepare her for changes in routine too, as these can lead to misbehavior. You have to take the car for repairs. Why don't you pick out books to read while we wait? Provide plenty of attention. Kids have a knack for finding and convenient time stacked out like when you're on a conference call or in the shower. Often the misbehavior is a request for attention. When possible, give your youngster a fill-up of attention beforehand so she'll be less likely to misbehave. For example, you might color or sing songs before you before your call or shower. Strengthen small fingers. What do a bun and an old battalion master have in common? They could be play-doh tools that will spark your youngster's creativity and build his finger muscles. Together, look around the house for options, then encourage him to use his tools to mash, mold, or stamp Play-Doh. Let's brush our teeth. Stand in front of the mirror with the child while the two of you brush your teeth. She'll watch you, she'll watch you to learn the right technique. 
First in the circle, to clean all the surfaces of her teeth. Idea. Play a two-minute song so she brushes for the right amount of time. Chain of kindness. Help your youngster make a kindness chain. Each time he sees someone do a kind deed, he can write or dedicate to you a description of it on a strip of colored paper. Dad made a playlist of Mama's favorite songs. Give him tape the end. Give him tape. Have him tape the ends of the strip together to create a link. Then add new links as he spots more acts of kindness. Wolf quoting. Yesterday's the past. Tomorrow's the future. But today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Just for fun. Why do sharks live in salt water? Because paper. Because pepper makes them sneeze. A passion for learning. Liam loves construction sites. Aaron is crazy about animals. Whatever your youngster is into, consider these tips for using his interest to help him learn. Talk about it. When you pass a construction site, ask your child to name vehicles he knows. Point out workers wearing hard hats or mixing cement. You'll boost his oral language and vocabulary. Explore together. Help him do research to learn about things he may not be able to see in person. For instance, check out books about coral reefs. Observe sea shows via online zoo camps. Or let your youngster ask an out-of-town relative how she cares for the fish in her home aquarium. Time for story. Your youngster's very your youngster's very first reading lessons take place. Will you read out loud to him? Here's what he learns from story time. How books work. We read the words on the pages from left to right and top to bottom. Run your finger under the words or let your child point to them as you read. Soon he will recognize words he sees frequently. How reading sounds. Try to read at a comfortable pace and with expression so your little one gets a feel for what fluent reading sounds like. Add to the experience by giving each character a different voice. How readers think. Encouraging your youngster to be a thinking reader as conscious like, why did the turtle win the race? Also, compare story events to a child's experience. This reminds me of when we saw the meteor shower. And pause now and let, and then to let them, and then to let him tell you what he likes best about the story and why. Talking about feelings. How can I help my grandson be more considerate of other people's feelings? Young children are still learning to recognize their own emotions, which is the first step towards feeling empathy for others. With a little guidance from you, he'll be on the right path. When you take walks, mention how people or animals might feel. That dog is rolling around the grass. He looks happy. Or as you read or watch TV together, act Ask him to act out the actor's emotions. Piglet is sad. Can you pretend to be Piglet and show me how he feels? Your grandson might hang his head and wipe away pretend tears. Then ask, if you were Pooh, what would you do to make Piglet feel better? The more your grandson explores emotions, the better he understands his feelings and those of others. And that's where empathy starts. Welcome to my apple orchard. If you can't get to an apple orchard, Bring the orchard to you. This tasty activity lets your child practice writing and math. Set it up. Help your youngster cut out red, yellow, and green paper apples. Put them in containers and label each basket with a price. She could even create pretend apple products. Maybe she'll line a clear jar with a little paper labeled Alice Applesauce, two dollars. Go shopping. Using real or pretend money, be your child's customer. Show her how to count out three quarters for your red apple or four dollar bills for your paper, for your apple pie. Count and taste. Add real apples to your youngster's orchard. Cut open two different varieties and ask her to scoop out and count the seeds in each. Which kind has more? Then taste the apples. Are they sweet, tart? Which do each of you like best? Alphabet detective. 
Let your child play detective and investigate the alphabet with these fun cases. He'll practice recognizing letters and their sounds, skills that will help him learn to read. Note, have your young you have your youngsters write each letter, A to Z, on a separate slip of paper to use for these activities. Mysterious sounds. Put all the letters in a pillowcase, secretly pull one out, and say a word that starts the letter, that starts the letter emp- emphasizing its sounds. We're, we're rainbow. Encourage your child to repeat the word and tell you the first letter. We're, we're rainbow. R. Now let him pull out a letter and make it sound for you to investigate. Hidden clues. Help your youngster make a magnifying glass. Cut the center from a small paper from a small paper plate. Tape plastic wrap over the hole. And attach a craft stick handle and have him gather items with tiny print. Toothpaste tube gift card coin. Can he use his magnifying glass to spot every letter of the alphabet? To keep a track, as he finds each one, he can turn the slip of paper with the matching letter upside down. Vanishing letters. Ask your child to arrange the letters in ABC order. Next, he should close his eyes while you take away a letter. His mission is to tell you which letter has disappeared. If he needs help, he can sing the alphabet song as he touches each letter. Play again and let him make a letter vanish. What rude things, Fufu? Noticing small things to be grateful for each day helps everyone in your family have a brighter outlook. Here's how to start your daily thankfulness routine. 1. Set aside every time, every day to share what, what you're grateful for. Perhaps you'll chat at bedtime or during dinner. 2. Have each family member name three things she's thankful for. She's thankful for that day, big and little. Your child might say she's good for you and your takeout pizza. For takeout pizza, for instance. Three, let your youngster make a gratitude notebook. Help her write down what everyone is thankful for each day and illustrate it. Tip, read over past entries together as a reminder of all the positives in your lives. Time. Electronic devices often keep little ones happily occupied, which can make limiting screen time a challenge for busy parents. We asked parents to share the top tips for coming back, is, and here's what they told us. Keep track. I discovered this idea last year after taking my daughter to an arcade. When we got home, she, she got four. She got four checkers to use as game tokens. She has made token in exchange for 15 minutes of screen time. When she's out of tokens, her screen time is up for the day. Play games. The car is the number one place where my child begs to play on my phone. So we started playing screen-free games instead. Our favorite is where we act like storybook characters and have to guess each other's identities. We might pretend to breathe fire like a dragon or talk in a squeaky voice like a mouse. Read the light. I found this strategy by accident. My daughter asked to use my tablet because she was bored. I cheerfully replied, but it's not tablet time. It's coloring time. It worked. Now if she asks for too much screen time, I suggest it's time for a different activity. She usually shifts gears without complaint. Please that build self-confidence. I usually just say good job when my daughter does something well. Is there a better way to praise her? Everyone wants to hear what they're doing well, and your child is no different. Well, there is nothing wrong with saying good job. A more specific compliment tells your daughter exactly what she did well. If she shows you her completed jigsaw puzzle, you might say, that puzzle has a lot of pieces. You'll be stuck with it. Or when she shares a toy with the sibling, you could tell her, I noticed you were generous by letting your brother play with your favorite train. She'll feel good about herself and be likely to find more ways to solve problems on her own or getting along with others. Think outside and inside the box. Big cardboard boxes can inspire your child to think creatively. Let him try these ideas. A box can become a cozy classroom for your youngster stuffed animals. He could teach them by reading out loud or showing them how to count. 
and encourage the child to climb inside the box and draw on the walls. The crowns. Maybe he'll design stars and planets so it looks like in our space scene. Or perhaps he'll create an undersea environment with colorful fish. Suggest that a youngster decorates the outside of a box. He might draw gumdrops and lollipops to turn it into a gingerbread house or add zigzags to make it a race car, for instance. Tip. No large box? Have your child help you make one. Open several smaller boxes at the seams and tape them together.